What's up guys, this is Corey with DBS Decks, and we are back with another tournament breakdown. Um, so today we're looking at the Pro Play Tour Philadelphia event that happened this last weekend. Um, a really cool event, um, one of the first big, big events in this current, um, you know, set 7 format and all that kind of stuff, um, As we're especially as we're starting to evolve into this format and learning what's good and everything like that. Um, so there's about 130 total players in the event, which is really, really solid for an event like this. Um, if we look at the leader dominance, we had 11 different leaders overall in top 16. Um, a couple different leaders that we've not really seen a lot of representation before in top 16. Um, that we'll get into a little bit um, as we move into the card dominance chart. Um, since Ubin was the most dominant card, it was played in 40% of decks. Um, followed by Supreme Kai Time World Protector, there were several um, Toa decks. Um, so that's why this is the most represented super combo. Um, same thing with like Relentless Direction Mira, Mira Self Reformation, and Creator Absorbed, and Vegeta Time Regulator. Um, going on into this event, this we saw the return of things like Janimba start doing well again. We had two Janimbas in top 16. Um, we had Victory Strike variants do well again. We had two more Victory Strike variants in top 16, and a lot of all sorts of really neat stuff. So let's go ahead and get on into the breakdown. Um, so first up, we've got DBS Deck's very own Jordan Markle running Toa. Um, he ended up winning the entire event, which is super awesome. Um, great to see Jordan do well. Um, he is running Toa, like we talked about. Um, he's running a little bit of a different variation on Toa. He is running this um, vanilla coup type variant of um, Toa. Um, he's running three of the Adventure Begins um, with the Super Saiyan Trunks, um, so it's really cool to see there. Uh, moving on into the actual list, so we got three of the Sun Goku Adventure Begins, like we talked about. Um, this is great for finding the four star ball and getting the vanilla trunks out, which is nice. Gets you some great value there. Um, two, Supreme Kai of Time, Time Disruptor. Um, this is a really great kind of stall tactic type card. Come into play, draw a card, which is nice. Um, three of the Super Saiyan Trunks of Vanilla. Um, it's 20 gauges beat stick effectively. Um, four, Vegeta Time Regulator. It's really kind of the MVP of the deck. This is what the whole deck runs around. As long as you see this, you could, yeah, you're going to probably do well. Um, two, Dark Absorption Mira. Um, this is just another way to get into the Mira chain for you, which is nice. Um, three dimensional support trunks. This is again more ways to get out the Super Saiyan trunks vanilla. Um, it also gives a crit, which is really, really, really nice. Um, four relentless destruction mirror. Um, this is a target to search off of our leader. Um, whenever we come into play off of Overrealm, your opponent discards a card, so it's nice there. It's a 15k. Um, we've got two trunks time regulator. Um, this is again just searching more cards at the top of the deck. Um, three time ruler Toa. Um, three umbral invitation Toa. This is kind of your steal your stuff package. Um, as well as the Toas that we need in order to go up into the mirror chain, which is nice. Um, we've got two Dimensional Banisher Fu, which is great removal. Um, two Miss, uh, Mass Saiyan, the Mysterious Warrior, again more removal, and both of these are Double Strikers, which is nice. Um, the Fu is searchable off the leader ability. Um, and then moving on onto our mirror chain, we've got four Mirror Self Reformation, um, which of course goes up into the Mirror Creator Absorb. This is really the win con of the deck. Um, as Jordan talked about, a lot of the time he just wasn't attacking until he could get up into these mirrors um, and get the opponent's hand down to like nothing and then give him crit and start swinging. Um, it was really kind of his strategy with the deck. He ran it more as a hand destruction than anything. Um, next up, we've got four of the Supreme Cap Time World Protector. Um, this is your super combo for Overrealm decks. Um, we got two power bursts. Um, this lets us get back the Sun Goku Adventure Begins or the Supreme Kai of Tai Time Disruptor, which is nice. Um, it's also sparking. Um, and then finally, three four star ball. Again, this is just searchable off the Goku. This gives the um, Vanilla Trunks plus 10k, which is nice, especially once it becomes a critical attack. Um, really, really good synergy there. Moving on to the sideboard, we've got three Dark Power Black Mass Saiyan, um, three or two Dende new to the job. 2 Kami Global Unifier, 2 No Escape Sun Goku, 2 Power Burst, 2 Toki Toki, and then finally 2 Trunks Power Overseeing Time. Um, I don't have a lot of critique for this deck. Obviously, um, George Markle ran it. Um, he did really, really well. Um, I think he was 10th seed going into Top Cut, and then he just ended up dominating in Top Cut, um, eventually beating Anthony Hernandez 2-0 in the finals, which is really cool to see. Um, just a really great job there from uh, Jordan. Um, next up, speaking of that, we've got Anthony Hernandez's, um, I don't even want to call it Shenron Gogeta anymore because it has so many different other options. Um, it's just kind of like Shenron big stuff now. Um, we'll get into a couple of these options here. Um, so he's running two of the Kaioken Defender of Earth. 
um, three at all cost Vegeta, three Whis the Resting Attendant, three um, Ultimate Fusion Gogeta, two Gogeta Hero Revived, two Crisis Crusher, two Newfound Power Perunga, two Shinron Figure of Majesty, one Fu Shrouded in Mystery, uh, four Temporal Rescue Trunks, uh, one uh, Goku and Oob Seeds of the Future, four Sensu Bean, four Whis's Coercion, four Objection, two Dragon Radar, four World Peace, uh, five Perunga's Dragon Balls, one One Star Ball, and then one Super Dragon Ball. And then moving in onto our sideboard, we've got two King Piccolo Limitless Power, um, three an Unexpected Turn, um, two Dark Power Black Mass Sand, two Dende New to the Job, one No Escape Sun Goku, one Toki Toki Time Creator, two Toa Dimensional Leaper, and then two Bardock Fully Unleashed. Um, so this is, I believe, the third consecutive tournament where we've seen Anthony Hernandez run this Shenron type variant. Um, and we've seen it evolve at each event, which is really, really nice. Um, his first event, it was strictly a Shenron Gogeta. Then the next event, it was Shenron Gogeta with the Kaioken. And now we are Shenron Gogeta with the Kaioken. And the sea or the Oob and Goku seeds of the future, as well as the Foo Shredded Mystery in the main, kind of like we talked about. Um, so it kind of evolved from just going into the Gogeta route to now just I'm going to play big stuff with for free, you know, out of the drop with World Peace, and then I'm going to give it like triple attack, triple strike, and all this other really cool shenanigans and stuff like that, and just win the game that way. Um, this one's more of the ramp heavy version that we've seen previously because he is running the least resting attendant in the main. Um, so it allows him to ramp even more, and he's really building that up, so he's got several different options depending on where the game's going, um, which I think offers him a lot of unique abilities. Um, you know, you can go into the Kaioken, or you can go to the Gogeta Hero 7, or you can just go into the Goku and Oob and just kind of win the game that way. Um, give that thing triple attack and just win the game if you ramp up to 8, which isn't out of this realm of possibility with what this deck is trying to do. Um, it has a lot of defensive options um, with your Whis and your everything like that um you've got the one star ball and the super dragon balls to draw a lot of cards and kind of disrupt your opponent since you being great defensively crisis crusher is really good defensively um all in all very solid um you know i think as long as anthony continues to see results with this deck we'll probably continue to see that um obviously he didn't fare that well in in the finals I, like i said jordan got him 2-0 um, which is pretty interesting to see usually you would think that the shinron gogeta has um uh, not necessarily a positive matchup, but not that bad of a matchup versus Toa, uh, but Jordan was able to kind of pull it out. But still, really cool stuff to see from Anthony. Um, we, I like to see how the deck gets innovated um, as it continues, and he's finding more um, of these big bombs to kind of throw in here. Alright, next up we have Benjamin Colina running Prison Frieza. Um, so moving on into the list, we've got four Chain Attack, four Loyal Kakono, uh, four Quick Shift Berry Blue, 3 Umbral Blade Deborah, 4 Mind Control Bobbity, 4 Kaioken Sun Goku, 1 Freeze's Army Reborn, 4 Kaba's Awakening, 4 After Image Technique, 4 Is That All You've Got, 3 Paralysis Technique, 2 Planet M2, 4 Denial of Hope, 1 The Final Guardian, and then 4 Live to Fight Another Day. And then moving on to the sideboard, we've got 3 Foreseeing Hit, 2 Super Saiyan 3 Nappa, um, 2 Final Showdown Frieza. Um, three Frieza the Finisher, um, two Golden Freezer the Emperor, I don't uh, remember the middle name of that, and then finally um, three Zeno the Plane God. Um, so this is a deck that's been getting a lot of hype more recently, um, particularly going into the Chain Attack and Tabobity route to get the Kaiokens out. Um, I do think, obviously, at the top end, this deck is very strong. Um, I do think this is, to you know, use a term, kind of a trap deck. Um, people think this is, oh, this is just a great win strategy, I'll just go into Bobbity and I'll just win the game that way. It doesn't quite work out that way, unfortunately. Um, there are a lot of counters to the Bobbity. Denial of Hope is just a fantastic one. You just go, cool, I'll get rid of that. I'm not going to let that happen. Um, um, the deck does require you to sequence things correctly to make sure you're getting really the most out of your extra cards and things like that. You don't have super combos, so you have to be wary of that, so it's a little harder to defend. Um, you're relying on Kava's Awakening and things like that, and then all of your negates to kind of get past the effect that you don't have super combos. Um, you still have to find ways to pressure your opponent the way Kaioken is actually effective. Um, so there's a lot of ins and outs of the deck. I do think the deck has potential, and I think it is strong. Um, I don't think it's quite as strong as people have hyped it up to be, and obviously we saw that um, only one made it in the top 16. I don't quite remember off the top of my head, off of Scott Slater's breakdown, how many decks represented it um, in the overall event, um, but it is cool to see um, this deck finally get some success after a lot of hype and a lot of talk and things like that. 
Um, so let's move on. Next up, we've got uh, William Hawks running this Clash Coup, um, Red Green. Um, I'm really like in love with his leader right now. I think he provides a lot to the game. Uh, moving on into his list, we've got four Raditz the Oppressor, four Broly Demonic Origins, two uh, Mock Speed Kaiokens and Goku, four Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta Resonant Explosion, three Kaioken and Goku Defender of Earth, um, four Krillin Calling for Help, four Newfound Power Sun Gohan, um, four Trunks Bridge to the Future, uh, two Super Saiyan Broly Unforeseen Force, three Vegeta the Cruel, Two Final Showdown Son Goku, four Defensive Stance Super Saiyan Vegeta, uh, one SS3 Scramble, um, three Feet Kamehameha, one for the Greater Good, four Shocking Death Ball, and then one Preemptive Strike. Moving on to the side, we've got two Hidden Awakening Kale, two Unexpected Turn, uh, we've got two Dark Power Black Mass Saiyan, two Dende New to the Job, one Toki Toki, um, two Mercenary Tau, two Bardock Fully Unleash, and then two Mass Saiyan the Mysterious Warrior. Um, so what this deck is trying to do is it's trying to use the leader ability to get a lot of cards in the drop, um, because every time he attacks, um, he bursts two, and then you pitch a card, and then draw two. So you're able to fill up the drop pretty well, and then it's eff effectively just working its way up to get to the Kaioken, um, getting the 20 cards in the drop, so he only costs five, and you can just kind of win the game that way. Um, it's got the Kill Krillin type package with the Krillin calling for help, and the um, final showdown Sun Goku, which is a great way to go about things. Um, it's also running the defensive stance Super Saiyan Vegeta. The reason why it's running this over Paragus is ideally you're trying to remain at high life so you can get the most value out of the um, Kaioken Goku and running a sparking super combo because you're getting cards in the drop really effectively uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Um, it's also running the scramble which I think is kind of interesting because you are milling a lot um, so you probably don't get to see that like too too often. Um, that's probably a good way to kind of close out games unexpectedly. Um, it's also running the counterplay card with the Vegeta and the Mach Speed, which is nifty. Um, and then it's really just kind of go and get cards in the drop, defend, um, and work your way up to Kaioken. So it's kind of linear in that way. This does have a little more options because you're able to go a little bit aggro with the Super Saiyan Blue Goku Resonant Explosion. And whenever your leader does get to its backside, um, it becomes a 20k double striker as long as you have a Krillin in the drop. Um, we're only running, running the one Krillin in order to do that, but typically you're going to be able to see that. Um, so all in all, pretty solid. Um, I'm not sure personally if this is the way I would go with a red-green version of this, but I understand what it's trying to do. Um, and it's really cool to see um, some representation from this Clash Goku leader. Alright, next up we have um, Daniel Williams um, running AOD Dende. Um, for any of those of you who are aware, I'm in love with the AOD Dende deck. Um, not so much as I was when it first... Uh, Whenever first seven was first like officially revealed, um, but I do think the deck is incredibly powerful. Um, so we've got four Innocence Cannon Majin Buu, four Dark Duo Bobbity, uh, four Vegeta Agent of Destruction, um, four Awakening Evil Majin Buu, two Bobbity um, Overseer of Destruction, one Unyielding Spirit Trunks, four Janema Agent of Destruction, two Quick Shift Majin Buu, three Ultimate Evil Majin Buu, three Agent of Destruction Android 13, four Dangerous Journey Bulma. 2 Boo Boo Volleyball, SS3 Gotenks, um, 2 Great Saiyan Town Hero, 1 of the uh, Majin Buu Arcane Absorption, 3 Assembling the Squad, uh, 5 Dragon Ball, 1 1 Star Ball, and then 2 Super Dragon Ball. And then moving into the side, we've got 4 Dimension Magic, 4 No Escapes on Goku, uh, we've got 3 um, Supreme Guy of Time, World or Disruptor and then 4 Tien Shin Han Returning Fire. Um, there's not a lot you can do, honestly, with this size. It's probably the best you could like amount to. Um, really what this deck is trying to do is get to turn three, assembling the squad out the Innocence Cannon, go up the Innocence Cannon to Awakening Evil Majin Buu, um, go from Awakening Evil Majin Buu into the Arcane Absorption, um, flood the board with uh, Agent of Destructions, swing with a bunch of 20k crits, and then work your way up if you got the blue energy open into the ultimate evil Majin Buu over the arcane absorption. So you get two um, triple strike attacks, one's 40k, one's 60k. Um, this is really what the deck's trying to do. You're trying to win pretty fast by turn three, um, and then just not letting your opponent do much after that because you're just killing them. Um, the deck is somewhat glass cannon because you really don't have room to run like negates or anything in the main deck. Um, you're kind of stuck there. Um, there's so many cards that have to go into running the engine that you're just not able to have a lot of variety, a lot of text, or everything like that. Um, 
In my list, I'm typically just running six balls and one Super Dragon Ball. He's running the one Star Ball, which is fine. Um, he's also not going into the blue um, Dawn of Evil Majin Buu, which gives your Majin Buu's barrier and everything like that. Um, so that's kind of a route to go. Um, but just all in all, it's really exciting to see this deck do well. Um, I believe this ended up making top four at the event, um, which is really nice to see. I do think this deck um, is lacking representation more recently, um, but hopefully this kind of gives people pointing in the right direction because I do think this deck is incredibly powerful. All right, next up we have uh, Miguel... I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name because I will butcher it, uh, but Miguel is running your Oob Ultra Instinct package. Um, so he's got three of the Awakening Talent Pin, four Dende Astute Savior, one Unyielding Spirit Trunks, uh, four Hercule Proudest Grandpa, um, a 3-3 three, three split of Test of Strength Son Goku, Test of Strength Oob, uh, four Pan Proudest Daughter, um, four Videl Proudest Mother, um, three Son Goku Path to Infinite, three Son Goku Ultra Instinct, um, a 2-2 two, two split of Announcer Ever Curious and Play by Play Plo Pro, uh, one Toa Dimensional Leaper, one Scientist Fu, uh, four top of his game, Sun Gohan, four Dimension Magic, three Sensu Bean, and then one Mafuba. Um, so again, this is really cool to see. Actually, let's get in the sideboard. One more Mafuba, two striving to be the best, um, two your wide open, one God Strike Beerus, uh, two Dark Power Black Mass Saiyan, two Kami the Global Unifier, um, an additional Toa Dimensional Leaper, two Crisis Crusher, and then two Tian Shin on Returning Fire. Um, so again, really cool to see um, decks like this start doing well again. Um, this was a deck of another one of those. It got some hype whenever we got the power boosters and the anniversary box um, going in the Ultra Instinct. Um, basically, what this is just trying to do is get multiple like um, you know double strikers out on the board with the uh, proudest grandpa and the proudest daughter. Um, just draw a lot of cards, and then you got the test strength of Oob and Goku. Um, they get double strike and crit and bounce stuff, and you got Dende that's finding your pieces. Um, just kind of working your way up to really just like deal a lot of damage to your opponent, and then get into the um, Ultra Instinct Sun Goku and just try to close out games that way. It's a pretty nice win condition. It's triple strike that they can't combo, so if they don't have any gate, you just win the game. Um, a little harder to get that strategy to work anymore, just because the majority of decks are running several negates, and then you've got people citing things like No Escapes on Goku, which just makes this whole engine kind of null and void, um, which is kind of unfortunate, but um, it's not too, too terrible. Um, what this is really trying to do is just kind of swing with the go uh, the pan a couple times, then uh, bounce her back to the hand with the Sun Goku Path to Infinite, um, then evolve off the Path to Infinite into the Ultra Instinct and kind of win that way. Um, Scientist Fu is a nice addition. Um, it's another 25k double striker that draws you cards, which is really, really nice. Um, so all in all, just really good to see something like this do well. Um, not sure how he did once he got into top 16, because like I said, um, as we've seen already, majority of the decks in top 16 are sideboarding No Escape, um, so I'm sure he had kind of an issue getting through that field of stuff, um, but really nice to see um, something like this do well. Alright, next up we've got another Toa, and this is from Joseph Ramos Calderon, I believe is how you say that. Um, He's running more of a traditional Toa, not running the vanilla package like Jordan. Um, we got two Dark Power Black Mass Saiyan, um, two Dende New to the Job, two Kami Global Unifier, um, three Supreme Kai of Time Disruptor, two Toki Toki, four Vegeta Time Regulator, um, three Dark Absorption Mira, four Relentless Destruction Mira, three three Split on the Time Roller Toa and Umbral Invitation Toa, two Dimensional Banisher Fu, two Mass Saiyan the Mysterious Warrior, um, a four four Split of the uh, Mira Self Formation and Creator Absorbed. One Scientist Fu, one Fu the Dark Banisher, four Supreme Kai of Time World Protector, and then four Power Burst. Uh, moving on into a sideboard, we're running one Four Star Ball, one Dark Power Black Mass Saiyan, another Time Disruptor, uh, three Mercenary Tau, uh, two Super Saiyan Trunks, uh, three Dimensional Support Trunks, two Force Objection, and then two Invasive Power Mira. Uh, so he's siding into the vanilla package not as heavy because he's not running the vanilla um, adventure begins goku he's just running the dimension support trunks to get out the trunks in order to do that while still running one of the four star ball um so i think that's kind of a good compromise there um other than that he's running kind of your traditional um you know overwhelm stuff use vegeta time regulator to shuffle the deck back and draw cards um, and there means to put stuff back at the bottom, draw cards, and then the Toki Toki to shuffle the deck um, and draw cards with kind of your toolbox package of the Dende and the Kami um, and whatever else you might run on the sideboard. Um, this is typically what you're seeing. 
um, in these uh, Toa lists and then going up into the Scientist Fu and the Fu the Dark Banisher type stuff. Um, so again, Toa was the most represented deck um, this event. I think as more people are getting access to Time Regulator, um, we'll start to see more and more of these Toas start to do well, especially after it won this event. Um, so pretty nice to see. All right, uh, next up we have a another Janemba. This is from Nick Brady. Um, so Nick Brady's running more of your traditional Janemba versus the one that we'll see a little bit later. Um, so we've got four Unbreakable Super Saiyan Son Goku, Mr. Boo the Mischievous, um, four Psyche Demon rocking out, um, four Childish Heart Janemba, um, a 3-3 split of the Demon Sword and Janemba Agent of Destruction, two Reality Bender, one God Strike Beerus, four Infernal Villainy Cell, two Common Global Unifier, um, two Supreme Kai of Time Time Regulator, one Toki Toki Time Creator, four North Kai Keeping Watch, four Dimension Magic, four Sensu Bean, four Whis, and then two Your Wide Open. And like I said, this is more of what you're traditionally going to see in terms of running both of the pseudo super combos and the full Janimba chain. Um, just running Toki Toki to kind of take advantage of the Kamis and the Time Regulator uh, Supreme Kai. You got a blocker, you got board wipe, both of these draw cards, which is nice. It's running Your White Open, which is the blue counterplay card, um, extra card, which is nice. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Boo, the Mischievous, is kind of a nice addition. Um, this works similar to a uh, Supreme Kai of Time, Time Disruptor. Um, just for one, if your opponent has two or less energy, they can't attack with battle cards, energy costs two or less. Uh, it's blue, so you can kind of charge your late game, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but pretty solid in terms of, and pretty standard what you're going to see in Janemba. Moving on to the side, we've got two additional Your White Open, two Sun Goten Family of Justice, two Unexpected Turn, um, two Dark Power Black Mass Saiyan, um, two Supreme Kai of Time, Time Disruptor, um, a Heavenly Wizard Demigra, two Mercenary Tau, and then two Time Roller Toa. Um, so pretty standard. Um, I think it's good to see Janemba do well again um, and have some more representation in a tournament. Um, not that I'm like a huge fan of Janemba personally, but I do think it's good to have that type of deck in the format. Um, it keeps people playing a certain way, building their decks a certain way. Um, so Janemba is just not like dominating the format. Um, and Janemba kind of kind of sets the sets the tone of what you can and can't play, which I think is nice. Alright, next up we've got Broly, uh, Victory Strike, and this was played by Zach Lowe, um, so it's good, cool to see um, some Victory Strike representation again. People, for the most part, thought this is pretty much dead, uh, but he's running the yellow Broly swap engine um, type Broly, um, so we've got three Adoptive Father, Son, Gohan, two Fearless Assault, Krillin, two Godly Destruction, Whis, um, a 4-4 four -four split of the uh, Master Roshi and Master Shin, Marshall Meister, Three Musai Ito, um, four Intrepid Dynasty Sun Gohan, uh, three Prodigal Dynasty Sun Goten, four Path to Greatness, four Height of Mastery, three um, Announcer Play by Play Pro, four Full Surveillance Jocko, one um, Awakened Power, uh, four Successor of Hope, one Bloodlust, and four Flying Nimbus. Moving on to the side, we've got two Time Magic, three Unexpected Turn, two Supreme Kai of Time Disruptor, two Mercenary Tau. Um, two or three, two Tianchen on returning fire, uh, two Trunks power overseeing time, um, and then two um, Mass A and the Mysterious Warrior. So this is pretty much what you'd expect to see out of this type of deck now that you can't run like the Sugeshes and the, and the Bad Rings and all the Bloodlust and stuff like that. So it's a great way to kind of adapt the deck to the current format and what's allowable. Um, I do think the deck has potential. I just still think, you know, uh, Victory Strike is just a still a very good win condition. Obviously, there's way more options to play around it with all the counter plays and different things like that. Um, but to still see somebody, you know, sleeve it up, take it, and say, I'm going to see what happens and still do well, make top 16 is really nice. Um, I do think you still have to worry about this type of deck um, because, like I said, Victory Strike is still just one of the better win conditions in the game um, as long as you can kind of get around the army of... Um, you know, counter plays and things like that. So really cool to see there. All right, next up we've got our U6 Kaba. Um, this is by Henry Hernandez. Um, so let's get into it. Um, we've got two Kale, the Timid Sister, uh, four Sisterly Bonds Kale, two um, Brilliant um, Pairing Kefla, four Chompa and Vados, four um, Awakened Sister Kale, um, four Kefla Pika Perfection, one Meteoric um, Saiyan Kefla, four Khalifa the Bold Sister, two Kaba Saiyan of Universe 6, four um, Khalifa um, Trickster of Universe 6, um, 
the two Chompa the Trickster, four Khalifa the Awakened Sister, four Batama Super Combo, four Sensu Bean, two Planet Sadala, one Planet Vegeta, and two Time Magic. Uh, moving on to the side, we've got two Betrayal of the Master, two Kaba um, of Universe 6, two Frost Deadly Poison, um, two Vegeta and Kaba, uh, one Meteoric Energy Kefla, um, two Flying Nimbus, two Kaba the Revoker, and two an unexpected turn. Um, so we're starting to see like a couple different variations of this Kaba um, U6 package. You've got things like what Rishi ran back at Gen Con. Um, which was straight like more aggro, there was no negates, um, none of the Meteor energy and things like that. Um, you've got some of a, someone of a blend running some more of the control cards like the Chompas and the Frost Deadly Poison and then you've got this which is running the Meteoric Energy. Personally I'm not a fan of the Meteor, Mete Meteoric Energy, I'd rather just go the 4 drop route and things like that. Um, but it's still good to see that this Kaba is still representing. Um, I do think, you know, as we've talked about, like, ad nauseum at this point, I still think Kaba is probably the best leader out of set 7, um, even though it came out of the expert deck. I think there's a lot of interaction that goes with it. Um, I do think he's better for the U6 engine than Hit is. Um, so all in all, just really happy to see that this continue to do well. All right, next up, we've got kind of the highlight of the event. We've got our Yamcha. Um, and this was from Jovan Moreo, Moreiro, I believe is how you pronounce that. Um, and so he is running kind of an interesting version of this Yamcha. And this is actually really similar to the Clash Goku that we saw earlier. Um, so we've got four of the Baba, um, two Blades of Glory Sun Gohan, four Broly Demonic Origins, two Further Instruction Champa, three Mock Speed Kaioken Sun Goku, two Foreseeing Hit. 4 Super Saiyan Blue, Gogeta Resonant Explosion, 4 Kaioken Sen Goku, uh, 4 Trunks Bridge of the Future, 4 Vegeta the Cruel, 2 Hidden Awakening Kale, 4 Master Roshi Martial Expert, 1 SS3 Scramble, 3 After Image Technique, 2 Is That All You've Got, 4 Denial of Hope, and then 1 The Final Guardian, and then moving on to the side we've got Is That All You've Got, um, The Final Guardian, 3 Chan Attack Trunks, 2 Foreseeing Hit, 3 Zen of the Plane God, um, 3 Supreme Kai of Time, Time Disruptor, and then two Trunks Power Overseeing Time. Um, so really what this is, is this is just another way to try to get into the Kaioken. Um, on turn five, um, Yamcha is a burst leader, so you're putting cards in the drop. You've got like stuff like the Blaze of Glory, which is putting more cards in the drop. Um, so that's really what this deck is trying to do, just work its way up to Kaioken. Um, it's got some more of the red good stuff, like Forcing Hit, just a great card. Um, Super Saiyan Blue, Gogeta, Resonant Explosion, can make you really aggressive. Um, Vegeta the Cruel is just a great counterplay. Um, and then you've got stuff like After Image and Is That All You've Got and Denial of Hope, which only red leaders get, um, which are just kind of great additions to any kind of red deck. Um, but again, this is very similar to what we saw with the um, Clash of Fates Goku. It's just trying to work its way up um, to get into this Kaioken and just win games that way. We saw a couple games on stream of this where he did he just did just that and got into it and was just able to kind of dominate. Um, you do have to defend your life pretty well, um, but if you're able to do that, um, you've got a great win condition here in the Kaioken Sun Goku. Interesting that we cited in the chain attack stuff. Um, obviously, Chain Zone was very good. Um, if stuff gets out of hand, you can kind of pull into that, which is nice to see. All right, moving up, we have a, another Shedron deck. Um, this is Kyle Navarro, and he is running a, um, a Shenron Victory Strike, which again, shocking to see Victory Strike again. People, for the most part, pronounce this as dead. Um, moving on to his list, we've got four Fearless Assault Krillin, two Master Roshi Forged of Will, two Muta Ito, uh, four Path to Greatness, three Height of Mastery, one Newfound Power of Arunga, three Shenron Figure of Majesty, one Shenron the Wish Granter, four Temporal Rescue Trunks, um, one uh, Victory Strike, two Successor of Hope, one Crusher Ball, four Nimbus, four Personal Ambition, three Dragon Radar, four World Peace, and then just seven Dragon Balls. Moving into the side, we've got two Super Saiyan God Vegeta Energy of the Gods, three Crusher Ball, um, two Master Roshi, two Musai Ito, uh, we've got three Dangerous Journey Bulma, um, two Crisis Crusher, and then a Newfound Power Peruga. Um, so I do think this is cool to see um, Shenron Victory Strike do well again. Um, Purunga kind of had been the go-to place for the Victory Strike in terms of Wish Leaders for a while. Um, so it's cool to see Shenron do well. Um, this is kind of what you'd expect to see in a majority of these lists. Um, obviously, like the like spice inclusion, if you want to call it that, is the Shenron the Wish Granter, um, which whenever it comes into play, you draw two and then you can like give something plus 15k and a triple attack, which is nice. 
Um, I think that's what he kind of leveraged this to give this in the same term as Victory Strike. Um, so make the Victory Strike um, a big like 55k or 60k uh, triple strike uh, Victory Strike, which is cool. Um, and then you've got like the Mutai Itos and the Crusher Balls kind of defend yourself. Flying Nimbus for the Rush. Um, and all that kind of stuff. Shenron Figure of Majesty to then give your stuff you know, critical if you need to, like the Height of Mastery. Um, so all around, pretty solid. Um, I'm not quite sure about the Wish Granter myself, but um, I understand why it's there. Um, the sideboard is actually really interesting, like the Super Saiyan God of Vegeta, Energy of the Gods. Um, I'd imagine this is here for you know respect for the Zamasu engine and all of its tokens. Um, but other than that, this is pretty much kind of what you'd expect to see. Um, I think it's pretty solid. Um, it's cool to see some innovation like this doing well again. Um, like I said, I still think Victory Strike is incredibly powerful. Um, and I think this will kind of continue forward and we'll start seeing more of these start popping up. Alright, next up we have um, another Toa. Um, this is from Russell Steltzer. <laughs> And he is running, again, more of your traditional Janimba, or not Janimba, Toa, excuse me, um, without the vanilla stuff. Um, we've got one Dende, uh, one Kamehameha Global Unifier, three Supreme Kai of Time, Time Disruptor, um, one Toki Toki, one Toei Dimensional Leaper, four Vegeta Time Regulator, uh, three Dark Absorption Mira, four Relentless um, Destruction Mira, four Trunks Time Regulator, uh, three Time Roller Toa, two Armal Invitation Toa, four Dimensional Banish Rafu, one Mass Day in the Mysterious Warrior, four four line of Reformation and Creator Absorbed, one Scientist Fu, uh, four Supreme Kai of Time World Protector, and then four Power Burst. Then moving on to the side, we've got two Unexpected Turn, um, two Dark Power Black Mass Saiyan, um, an additional Dende, an additional Comet of Global Unifier, two Heavenly Wizard Demigra, two Mercenary Tao, uh, one Toa Dimensional Leaper, uh, two Crisis Crusher, one Trunks Power Overseeing Time, and then an additional mysteri or Mass Day in the Mysterious Warrior. So this is kind of doing the standard Toa stuff of um, Overwhelm stuff in, Time Regulator, put stuff back at the bottom, draw cards, Toki Toki, Shuffle, and Toolboxy type stuff. Um, just kind of working your way up into the mirror chain and just kind of win that way. Traditional Toa stuff, he's not, um, has any inclusion to the vanilla stuff, which is more traditional as opposed to what like Jordan ran, which is still, like I said, a very, very viable strategy with this whole leader. Um, as long as you know what you're doing, you have the potential to do really well with the Toa stuff. Hand destruction is very hard to deal with, especially when it's at three chunks at a time and it's a big, you know, ungodly high power level critical double striker coming at your face. It's very hard to deal with there. Um, so still, I think we have one more Toa after this. Um, this is a Toa dominated event, obviously, as Toa ended up winning, so it's cool to see the kind of the different mindsets going into these builds, what some were doing, what some prioritized, and what some didn't. Um, so moving on, we've got our uh, Bonds of Friendship Son Goku. This is from Land Brandon Lipschultz, I believe is how you pronounce that. I'm probably butchering that again as well. Um, but this is your Vanilla Coup. Um, we got two Further Destruction Champa, uh, four Fearless Assault Krillin, two Mutai Ito, uh, four Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, three Ginyu, three Son Goku, two Source of Power Son Goku, one Zarbon, the Emperor's Attendant, uh, four Bonds of Friendship Android 8, four Son Goku the Adventure Begins, two Training Buddy Krillin, one Dimensional Support Trunks, one Mass Stay in the Mysterious Warrior, one Fu the Dark Banisher, four Master Roshi Strict Instructor, four Flying Nimbus, one A Crack in Space Time, and two Power Burst. Moving on to the side, we've got an additional Mutai Ito, an additional Zarbon, um, two Mercenary Tao, two Crisis Crusher, three Haru Haru, two Tian Shan Returning Fire, um, two Bardock Fully Unleashed, one Mass Saiyan the Mysterious Warrior, and then a Beyond Darkness Demigra. Um, so this is a yellow variant of the Kid Ku, um, which is starting to see more play in terms of the Kid Ku variants, just because you have access to Mutai Ito, and Mutai Ito is incredibly strong, um, as well as Zarbon that's in color, which is nice. Um, we got some more Vanilla Love with the Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, so now you've just got more options there. Um, he is running the split of the Training Bed Krillin and the Dimension Support Trunks. Um, so it's not as prevalent as it was with the Training Buddy Krillins because Crisis Crusher is everywhere. Um, now that that's not as prevalent, you don't have to go as heavy on the Training Buddy Krillin. Um, he's also running a split of the Further Instruction Champa and the Kraken Space Time, which I personally like. Um, just because Kraken Space Time is only good on your leader um, versus Further Instruction Champa you can use on a battle card. Um, 
Oh, I didn't even mention this. He's running one, two, three, four, five of the four star ball, which is pretty standard there. Um, two power burst is interesting as opposed to traditional four, but he is running four of the flying Nimbus. Um, he is running main board through the Dark Banisher as opposed to Beyond, Germ or Beyond Darkness Demigra, which I think is more comfortable on the side now for particular matchups. But um, overall, this is, for the most part, what you're going to expect to see out of these Vanilla Cube lists now. Um, they're not nearly as prevalent as they were before, or they're not seeing nearly as much play as they were. Um, just because there's a lot more things like these have a really hard time with a lot of the red stuff that's going on a lot of the counterplays just aren't super kind to the vanilla Q uh, deck either um, but there is still a lot of potential in the deck um, obviously it's a lot of hand advantage it's a lot of pressure um, you're building up big board states you're doing a lot of really cool things there um, so it's still good to see it i still i still am a fan of the uh, vanilla Q lists um, especially in all the variety that they come in. Um, it's one of the more versatile leaders, um, just because you can literally run it with just about any other, any color because you have those vanilla options. Um, so really nice to see there. All right, and then next up, we've got our last Toa. Um, this is from Eric Hill. Um, we've got two Dark Power Black Bass Sand, two Dende Into the Job, two Kami Global Unifier, one No Escape Sun Goku, three Supreme Kai of Time Worlds Protect, or World, or Time Disruptor, excuse me, one Toki Toki, uh, four Vegeta Time Regulator, one Crisis Crusher, two Dark Absorption Mira, four Relentless Destruction Mira, um, two Times Choice Supreme Kai of Time, three Time Roller Toa, three Umbral Invitation Toa, two Dimensional Banisher Fu, um, two of the Force Destruction Mira, um, four Self Reformation, two or four Mirror Crater Absorbed, four Supreme Kai of Time Worlds Protector, and then four Power Burst. And then moving on to the sideboard, um, two unexpected turn, um, two Supreme Cap Time Regulator, um, two Toa Dimensional Leaper, uh, Crisis Crusher, uh, two Force Subjection, or Force Ejection, Mass Saiyan, uh, two Haru Haru, two Tian Shin on Returning Fire, and then two Mass Saiyan, the Mysterious Warrior. So similar to the other ones we talked about, this is more of your traditional Toa. Um, it's just trying to overwhelm stuff in, shuffle or put stuff back in with Vegeta Time Regulator, draw cards, and then Toki Toki Shuffle so you can get back into your super combos, and then work your way up into the mirror chain. Um, it's got the uh, Toas to steal stuff. Um, he's a little bit more toolboxy in the 3Ks because he's got the No Escape, um, as well as the Kami and the Dende, and he's running a 2-2 line of that, which if I was to build Toa, this would probably be more similar to what I would build um, running majority of these one drops to kind of cycle through the deck and everything like that. Um, you're starting to see a little bit more play of these additional uh, mirrors, which I think is kind of cool. Um, each one of them have like different um, interesting effects. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. He went with the Supreme Kai of Time times Choice, as opposed to like, the Trunks or the Bardog, which I think is an interesting pick. Um, I don't think it's necessarily wrong. Um, this one's only ever going to draw you one, where those others draw you two. Um, but this lets you get a little bit more options because you get to pick one of the three battle cards that you pick um, Which the deck is majority of battle cards. So you're always gonna hit something off of that, which is nice um, But all in all just again Eric is one of the better players in the game So if he's running the list, there's usually nothing to really balk about um, It's usually gonna do well as the results have shown All right, and then finally we have um, Andrew Duvalle or Duval um, running Janimba um, he's running a more peculiar type Janimba. Um, so we've got two Further Destruction Champa, two Awakening Talent Pin, four Beerus the Fickle God, three Childish Heart Janimba, three Undying Spirit Sun Gohan, three Demon Sword Janimba, two Agent of Destruction Janimba, four Infernal Villainy Cell, two Dende New to the Job, two Kami Global Unifier, two Supreme Kai of Time, um, Time Regulator, two Toki Toki, two Bardock Awaken Instincts, four North Kai, one All Too Easy, Three Dimension Magic, four Sensu Bean, and then one Mafuba, and then finally four Frost Deadly Poison. Um, so this is one that isn't um, putting a lot of emphasis on the Janimba chain, because you're not running like your Psyche Demons, there's no Reality Bender, um, and the counts are a little lower than what you're typically running. Um, this is primarily focusing on more defensive strategies, um, whether it be um, you've got your Counterplay cards and the Trampa and the Undying. Um, which is nice. You've got um, your blockers um, and all that kind of stuff. Um, he had to cut some to make some room for different things, um, so that's why you don't have um, a lot of like your Unbreakable Super Saiyan Gokus on the side as opposed to the main. 
Um, it's also prioritizing Frost Deadly Poison, which I think is an incredibly powerful card. Um, it's a Bloodlust, Crushable, Draw 1, Untap 1 type effect, which is really, really nice. Uh, moving on to the sideboard, um, we've got two Unbreakable Super Saints on Goku, one Unyielding Spirit Chunks, two Oath Power Tapion, um, two Reality Bender Janimba, um, three Chomp of the Trickster, um, three Source of Power, and then two Mercenary Tower. Really emphasize the self awakening the side uh, with both uh, Oath Power Tapion and the Source of Power, and then you've already got the Awakening Down Pan in the main, which I think is kind of an interesting call. Um, one Mafoop is kind of interesting as opposed to just like four Dimension Magic. Um, Bardock Awakening Instinct, I think, is actually a really good card. Um, you don't see a lot in these Janimba lists. Usually you're prioritizing, like, the Supreme Guy of Time, um, Light's Guy, to give your leader the buff and draw. But this digs two, pitches one, which I think is pretty interesting, um, especially as a 20k. Um, you got the Toki Toki engine, um, getting a lot of these puzzle pieces with the Dende, the Kamis, and then the Blocker, which the Blocker is a really nice addition. Um, but all in all, very solid. Um, really cool to see some variation on the Janimba list, um, especially in that blue-yellow space when you can use a lot of these counterplay type cards, um, which I think is a really, really cool addition to the whole deck. Um, but that is it, guys. That is your top 16 uh, Pro Play Tour Philadelphia breakdown. Um, let us know what you think down below about the list that we saw, lists that you didn't see, things that you can kind of take out of this tournament moving forward, um, and all that kind of good stuff. But we will see y'all next time.